Hey, what's up, guys? Chad Hermanson here with Metal Edge Training Coach. Today, I'll be chatting with Jared Fernandez. Jared Fernandez is one of the few pitchers in the major leagues to have a knuckleball. So he's going to share his story about how he became a knuckleball pitcher and what he is up to now. He has a, a beard company. He has, a, well, he has a beautiful giant beard, and he has some oils, and that all those beard products that you see everywhere, he started his own company. So we're going to learn about the knuckleballs and his beard company. So enjoy this conversation with Jared Fernandez. All right, Jared Fernandez, what's up, man? Hey, Chad, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for coming on board today. I know you're probably extremely busy. Look, looks like you might be going to hunt some duck or some deer back there. <laughs> we stay pretty busy out here in Utah in the winter, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you had you had popped up on my uh, my social media feed the other day, and I hadn't seen you in a really long time, right? Yeah. It's It's been years. Um, you certainly didn't have this long, luxurious beard, <laughs> and you you started a, a new company to f with beard oils and, and all this stuff. And so you were kind of promoting that, putting some information out on that. And you were kind enough to send me a, a box of your stuff. And uh, I got it here. So first of all, before I, I start sharing your stuff, we're going to get to baseball. That stuff's the, that's right. the boring stuff, right? <laughs> but let's talk about your, your beard company and what got you started on that. Yeah, it, it's been pretty fun. I mean, I always rocked something in the off season, a little goatee or a beard or something. Tried to play in ball, but some teams, you know, back in the day made you shave. So uh, yeah, I, I just never got scared to use any product. I always thought I'd get the big oil ring or, you know, I didn't know what would happen when you put that stuff in your face. It would burn or if it'd make my pitches slippery or something. You know, I didn't know yeah. what any of that stuff did. So, you know, after I not too long ago, I went and smelled some stuff, tried some stuff. I just didn't really like the smells. So I studied on how to make my own, um, came up with my very own recipes and then did some smells that I really like. So um, that's just how it started. And then I had a bunch of boys that I hunt with that are, hey, man, these are good smells. We love your product. You should start selling it. And I just did it for myself. But mm -hmm. yeah, we started uh, just a little uh, company. My son does all my IT and my, my, uh, website and so me and him and my wife does packaging quality control so we're uh we're on our way it is a family business love it yep yeah so you can see your logo you got on your hat so i'm gonna yep, i'm gonna show you now so we're getting there yeah dude you got it all set up so you gave me about i think five different flavors here i'm gonna share these this is what the little oil droplet looks like here oh. And we got we got to look at your beautiful face, you know, all the time now. <laughs> so I, I was like, when you sent me the shampoos and stuff, right? You got conditioner and shampoo, and I'm like, man. So every time I shower, I got to look at Jared's face. Is that <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. Thanks. You're gonna be in my mind all the time. Um, so we got, which you said you mentioned to me the favorite, which I really like, cherry tobacco. Yep. Um, so they all kind of look like this. We got uh, black raz. Right, a couple of different flavors. Yeah, a little sweeter. Um, yeah, sandalwood is the other. Yep. Tiger's blood, which that's kind of like fun. My... that was fun to make. I like I said, I went through so much product. I smell it, check and texture, no good. Chuck it. So I mean, I I threw away thousands of dollars of product. So yeah, these five smells are the ones that I wanted to launch with. Um, they're just fun. Just to, you know, they smell good. They're they're not overpowering. They're not like you know, the 1970s cologne that I just makes me itch. So I made them yeah. specifically exactly how I want it on my face. So, yeah. And I think the, the last one here was the uh, Irish coffee. Yep. All right. So if you like the smell of coffee a little bit. Yeah. So you got your shampoo, your conditioner, and then you got a kind of more of a beard balm, right? For yeah, the beard, longer type beard. Yeah. Beard balm's more for shaping like a longer beard. Um, anyone yeah. can use oil, even if you just have dots, you know, it's good for your skin. I just, you know, you'll see some people that are just so dry and they get that galaxy on their black shirt and just put a few drops of oil on your, on your face yeah. and, and put some moisture on there. But yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just a lot of fun, you know, yeah. yeah I've never started a company before, so we're learning a lot, but it, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. It's cool. It, it's cool. Probably. And obviously we're beards are definitely in and they have been, it seems like for a while it's, yeah. Um, you don't see too many guys with goatees anymore. I always wore a goatee for yeah. since I was like 15. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah I couldn't uh, connect here until I was 40 something. So <laughs> there it, you it go. took me a long time. There you go. Now I got your uh your website here. It's uh J Fez Beard Co C O dot com. Yeah, right, yeah. So. I had a lot of uh a lot of nicknames, you know, throughout my career. Nuxy, Twinkle Toes, you know, Michelin <laughs> Man. I had them all, but J Fez is what uh, most of my buddies call me. So just J Fez J F E Z Beard Co dot com. So there you go. Yeah. So you guys got beers, go check that out. Good stuff. I really like it. The the oils smell amazing. So oh, I thank you. yeah, keep crushing that and and it's gonna be funny. And you just started this whole thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just, uh, we launched on New Year's Day. So um I, it took me a long time. Like I said, I didn't want to have any of my friends put bad stuff on their face. So I definitely got my degree in skincare, hair care. So I went to work and learned all <laughs> I possibly could. So it's Perfect. good, I promise. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So keep go check that out. So I, I guess we'll talk about some baseball stuff. You know, my my as well. Here's some baseball. I love beards it. A, I'm thinking like we going from knuckleballer to to beards, right? Nice. So you you have a pretty cool story because number one, you were a knuckleball pitcher. No. And no. and uh, there's not too many of those guys around. Like you could maybe maybe ten or less that have really had any type of success at the highest level at the big leagues. Yeah. Um, walk us through your story about how you became a knuckleball pitcher. Um, mine, mine was a crazy story. So I was at uh, Fresno State. Um, I was, you know, we went to regionals. I was one of the top pitchers in the country. I was, you know, low 90s, nothing fantastic. I'm just over six foot, average change, average curve, everything. So, you know, thought I'd get drafted super late. No draft. I signed as a free agent. Uh, and how I signed, you want that story? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, how I actually signed was um, a scout for the Rockies had seen me and the draft was over and said, hey, uh, who picked you up? I'm like, nobody. He's like, oh my gosh, I put your name in a bunch of times. You need to play pro ball. Uh, let me make some calls. So he called the Rockies. Uh, Rocky said, hey, we just signed a ton of pitchers. Can't do it. Um, so he said, hey, um, told me my son is an A ball coach for the Red Sox. Let me call him. So he called him. And they had somebody just get hurt. So I said, find anybody you can. So they called me. So it was a Rocky scout helped me sign with the Red Sox. Uh, they gave me a thousand bucks and, and shipped me out. And they said, oh, you know, where do I, what do I do? Do I take my wife? And they're like, you're married. I'm like, yeah. They said, oh, we could have got you 10 grand. Sorry. We didn't know. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I'm so happy to be playing. So played my very first year of pro ball. I did really well. Um, you know, I just kind of middle relief. I don't even think they gave me a start, but my numbers were good. Uh, minor league director came and said, hey, congratulations. You know, you played your year of pro ball. So we're going to go ahead and release you. What? So, you know, I, I said, it's I like think that. I'm the number two guy here. He said, you're a dime a dozen. You know, we can find you anywhere unless you show us something extraordinary. Um, I'm talking a lot, but uh, um, he, I said, I have the best knuckleball in the world. He's like, oh, really? Let's, let's, let's see it. Go get a catcher. So I'm like, okay. So I went and got Joe D. Pastino, uh, caught my bullpen. It was like the best bullpen I've ever thrown in my life. Uh, they said, congratulations, you got a job next year. So that, that's how I signed and stuck on. Um, so from there, uh, go to my spring training the next year. Sorry, man, I'm talking a lot. No, this, this uh, is your story, man. Love it. I love the it. The next year, spring training, um, Wakefield had just got released from the Pirates mm -hmm. and hooked up with our minor league pitching director. And Phil and Joe Negro were coaching the all-girls team, the Silver Bullets, at our facility in Fort Myers. Um, so they were like, do you want to keep playing, Wake? And he was like, yeah. So they signed him. They said, hey, we're gonna, we got this young kid, Jared Fernandez. We're going to turn him into full-time knuckleballer. Uh, so they came and talked to me and said, hey, we want you to turn full-time knuckleballer, uh, work with Phil and Joe Necro and Wakefield every day. What do you think? I'm like, I'm not going to be a knuckleballer. You know, I'm throwing hard. I, I'm i ready to, you know, eat it, eat it, let it go and throw fastballs. I said, if you don't turn to a knuckleball, you don't have a job. Mm. So I was a knuckleballer that day. It was very easy to make that decision. So that, that's how it all went down for me. So, so that, yeah, you, you had missed that to me before and like, you thought you had an amazing kind of short season, like your first taste of, of pro ball. Right. And, and you're, you know, I don't know if it was brutal honesty or whatever. This, this guy, the guy was like, Hey, we got plenty of guys just like you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that made you feel real good. 
um, right? They, they know they, they're just laying it out there for you, right? Yeah. Um, but then you said you already had it in your bag, like, hey, I'm really good at knuckleball. So how, like, when did that start for you? Was it in high school when you were a kid, just messing around? I, I could always throw it. I threw it a little different than everybody else, but I could always throw it. And I actually saw Wakefield in the NLCS, I want to say it was in 91 or 92. And I thought I could do that, you know. And so I threw it a few times in college. I remember a regional senior year against LSU. I probably broke it out seven, eight times because they were hitting everything else I threw. So mm. uh, threw a little more of that game. But, um, you know, I was happy they changed me. I ended up playing 14 years professional baseball. So, <laughs> you know, I think I could have maybe done it on my regular stuff. But realistically, I think it was a good decision for me to change. Yeah. So, so you still had your stuff, like your, your quote, your regular stuff, right? Your, <laughs> your fastball slider change, all that, that stuff. That fastball started depleting <laughs> as soon as I started going full, full-time knuckleballer, you know, you stand up more so you don't get that spin, uh, you know, a lot quieter body. So as soon as I did that, boy, that fastball velocity just crept down, but you know, got okay. more consistent with my knuckleball with strikes. Yeah. And, and how does the knuckleball for those that like maybe don't know anything about it. if you play baseball as i remember even when i was a kid you start like 12 or something you, you you're like oh dude i want to throw a knuckleball so you just yeah. kind of start messing around playing catch with it uh just have so, some fun in the backyard right do, do you yeah. have can you show us if you, i don't know if you have a yeah, ball around. i got a ball here how do you throw so, yours so mine's way different so i know like uh wakefield um joe negro phil negro they all had their fingernails and they dug it in i remember uh wake would get done he'd take his fingernails off and you could see the imprints Mm. um where his fingers were i mean he dug them right in you no know seams. especially in fenway park in april that that hurts your fingers so yeah okay um me i mine's a lot different so i actually put um this finger kind of i don't know if you can see that very well yeah. so this finger just kind of curls over and that nail bends over so i threw mine like that okay um and most guys as a knuckle bar they'll get their, they'll, their nails here and they'll give it a push mm. and then that let the elements move it you kind of want a quarter spin and that's about it from the pitcher's mound to home just kind of a quarter spin let the wind the heat everything else move it around uh, mine i actually threw it so i'd throw and just kind of let go right there and then just let everything absorb in my shoulder so whatever okay. takes spin off doesn't matter how you throw it um but just you know take that spin off and hope the elements will move it yeah so elements are important so that does that mean the weather like the climate all that stuff yeah, huge. I mean, Utah, I couldn't get much movement at all. Uh, I remember I played a, a game here, AAA against the Bees. Uh, I was on the news. They said, hey, how are you going to do? I said, I'll go five innings, give up five runs. They're like, no, you need to be more positive. <laughs> sure enough, I went five innings, five runs. So That's sometimes funny. it just doesn't move. But spring training was incredible. You know, you come from the Rocky Mountains and mm. get to Florida and that humidity. Loved it. Or if it rained, you know, and in Cincinnati and then you could just see those heat waves coming up oh I love to throw a knuckleball in that interesting so I did did coaches or like so when you were pitching now did you mainly come out in relief or were you I starting did everything yeah you I did everything. everything I got some spot starts I mean I, I my job was always the uh, you know sit in triple a more insurance policy go up to the big leagues for six weeks come back down for two weeks go back up for a month come back down for a week and I was fine with that I mean that was just kind of my role um, but I, I think I helped teams win just because, you know, if they had a rough time and used a lot of pitchers, I could save the bullpen for their next series. So, mm. you know, a lot of times I would start come in relief the next day. Uh, it was fine with me. I was just happy to to play and pitch and be on such great teams. So, you know, I, I thought I was an asset and it was really fun to watch, you know, with the Astros. Um, I was coming in mid relief a lot and then have Brad Lidge or Billy Wagner come in after me. So I'm throwing you know, 55 mile an hour knuckleballs and then see Billy Wagner 101 from the left side. I mean, they had no yeah. chance. It was really, well, they'd had no chance with him anyways, but after seeing 55, it, it was quite an adjustment. Yeah. So you're 55. What was the average? What, what was your velocity my, with that? My slowest typically. was 49. And in kangaroo court, I was with the Reds. They actually fined me a hundred dollars for throwing under the speed limit. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, Barry Larkin was our judge and he nailed me with a hundred dollar fine. So 49, um, but 49, my high highest ever was 84, but that's when I still threw pretty hard. So, you know, 49 to 76, right in that area. Okay. So would you, uh, you would try to manipulate and, and try to have different speeds with it. 
yeah, definitely. I didn't want people just sitting, you know, one speed, 60 miles an hour. And, you know, I used to wear people out, all the hitters, I would say, you know, I had some great hitters that I played with. I mean, I, I remember talking to Jeff Kent, uh, Ken Griffey Jr., Nomar Garcia Parra. I mean, those guys are like, hey, what, what are you looking for when you face me or a knuckleballer? Uh, you know, how do you approach me? So that really helped me just trying to pick the brains of hitters mm -hmm. to make me be better. I mean, I know what I had to do, throw, throw the knuckleball for strikes, get movement. That was fine. But I wanted to see what those hitters, how they would approach me. Are they taking? Can I sneak a fastball in there, you know, for strike one if they're not swinging? So uh, I got I got a lot of input that helped me a lot. Yeah, would they? So, yeah, because I remember I only faced a few of them. I, I remember facing Wakefield in spring training one time. Yep. Um, and it one would move really well, then one would just kind of sit there and you're like, ooh, like yep. like you felt like you had some time to whack at it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so knowing that and that so every occasionally would you try to pop that fastball in or would you mainly yeah, stick I, with the knuckleball? I had to. I mean, I had a some were just guys I knew were looking dead red knuckleball. I, I actually had a a pretty good one. Um, this is way back in the day. It was against uh, Vladimir Guerrero. Um, this is when he was going 40, 40, 40, man. So I think mm. he had his 40 some stolen base. And I think he had 39 home runs and this was in Montreal back in the day when he was there. Yeah. Um, they're bring, get Fernandez up, you know, I'm like, Oh no, who's coming up. Oh, I know exactly what they're doing here. So yeah, I go in to face Vladdy. And I remember I went, you know, slow knuckleball, boom, home run foul. I mean, his, his hands were so <laughs> fast home run foul. Yeah. I went as hard as I could knuckleball, boom, home run foul the other way. And, you know, <laughs> oh, two, you want to expand the zone? And I went fastball right down the middle. And he just, oh, he was devastated. Yeah. I mean, if he would have swung at that, he would have just destroyed it. So he froze him. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it worked out, but trust me, sometimes it did not work out. So <laughs> that, that was a good time, though. Yeah. Did you have, uh, I remember as hitters, they would talk, especially if they're a switch hitter, right? Mm -hmm. When yep. mainly if say your switch hitter, a lot of times if you had a righty, because I, I think most of the knuckleballs I've seen have been right guys that are throw right handed, they wouldn't switch to the left side. They're like, yep. I don't want that messing my lefty swing up. Did, yep. did you find that was quite the case? I found that a lot. Before? And you know what? Now that I'm I'm 50 years old, I think maybe I should have started just throwing sliders to those guys, but there you, go. you know, I, I didn't think about it at the time. I, you know, knuckleball pitcher, you got to throw your best pitch. So uh, but looking back, man, I wish I would have thrown that breaking ball when they stayed up righty, but uh, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. Cause I, I just remember, cause it's just so rare, right? Yeah. You, it happened a lot. A, a yeah. lot of people did that. And I, I actually didn't know how to approach it. You know, you had to go through the lineup. This guy does this, this guy does that. And then when they'd stay, I'd be like, mm. okay, that's up to him, you know? So it, it, it just, just depended on the hitter. Yeah. It's interesting. And so, yeah, so you, you say, you, you know, your what your role is, which is you're, you're kind of a, the jack of all trades, right? You can pitch in any spot. Um, teams are utilizing if you, maybe as an emergency starter, spot starter, relief type guy. Um, now tell us the teams that you played for in the big leagues and kind of what maybe any stories that you had with those teams. So signed with the Red Sox and uh, didn't go up to the big leagues for quite some time. I mean, Wakefield was in the big leagues. I was in AAA forever. And I don't know that you want two, two AAA or two knuckleballers on the same staff. So um, did get called up with the, with the Red Sox and I didn't even get to pitch. So I got called up. Mm. They gave me the, Hey, you're here to stay. We're not making any trades. You've heard those stories before. Sure. Um, and it was really cool game. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was Roger Clemens first game back um, pitching against uh, the Red Sox. I mean, it was a huge deal. So I got there late. I got lost getting to the field. I mean, they called me that morning. The game was like at noon. My first call, if you know, it's a madhouse. It run up there. I get lost. I'm in Chinatown uh, by Fenway Park. I finally get in there. Here's your contract. Here's your pants, you know, and they said, don't go to the bullpen yet. Um, people are throwing batteries at players. So they'll wait for the police. So I had to have four cops run me out to the bullpen. Um, wow. Got there. Uh, our starter got in trouble. They're like, get Fernandez up got to stretch my arm and turn a double play. And that was it. So that night I was looking mm. at sports center baseball tonight, like, Oh, say my name. Uh, and not nothing. All I saw on the ticker was Red Sox trade for uh, Bryce flurry for a player to be named later. I'm like, no. So 
next day, Jimmy Williams was so nice with the manager was just like, Hey, you know, we felt good with you there. You know, you can stay, you know, take your three days. I'm like, no, I'm going to go back to, to triple am pitch and get me here again. So that's mm. my long red Sox story. As soon as yeah. I was a free agent, I uh, went to Cincinnati, was in the big leagues of Cincinnati. Uh, from there, I went to the Reds, was in um, AAA and the big leagues with the Reds. Then I went to, um, yeah, excuse me, the Reds. Then I went to Houston Astros. Then uh, one year I signed with the Phillies, just played in AAA there. And then went to the Milwaukee Brewers. I was in the big leagues there. And then finished my career uh, with the Toyo Hiroshima Carp in Japan, which was awesome. Yeah, you went to Japan, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so your big league career was there a point where you're like, okay, I'm just not getting the opportunities, right? Everyone kind of has their story of why they go overseas. Where would you yeah. say you fit in there? Um, it just, you know, that insurance policy was tough. You know, I would just go up for a few weeks, come down, go up. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was just hard to do, which was fine. And I think that, um, you know, I loved it. I love, I loved all of my big league teams, all the people that I've met. Uh, I always wanted to go to Japan, you know, I don't, I don't know why I just always wanted to go and play over there. I thought it'd be a lot of fun. I always yeah. played winter baseball. So I, you know, while it was snowing here, I'd go get more innings. I played two different winners in Australia, two in Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico played in the Arizona fall league. So I love to go about and see different places. So, you know, mm-hmm. Japan was definitely on my list. So yeah, t- tell us about Japan and your experience over in Japan. Uh, Japan was incredible. I, I had so much fun. Uh, baseball was awesome. They're incredible players over there. Um, everyone's fast. Everyone can hit, and everyone works their butt off over there. So, uh, so much fun. And you know, I took had my wife and kids there. Um, the idea was they wanted me to put my children in school. They were in elementary school back then. They wanted me to put them with the Mazda people in the private English speaking school. I said, no, I wanted them in public school. So they learned Japanese. And I guess that was a first. So Hmm. my kids in public school, they picked up Japanese like that. Uh, We just embraced the culture. We had, we had so much fun over there. So yeah, love the, love the carp. Now, did you get to learn some Japan yourself, Japanese language (laughs) and everything or not really? Not too much. I had a few guys helping me out, but uh, I tried, but it was not good. So yeah, (laughs) Let, let them know they're, now, were there any of, the, of their players that spoke English and you could communicate with them? With you? Uh, a little bit, think? yeah, a little bit. You know, so a lot of them were really interested in America. I mean, we had some guys on that uh, CARP team that were just incredible. I mean, Kuroda, uh, I don't know if you remember him. He, he was, mm-hmm. you know, he people wanted him to go to the States and pitch. He just wasn't sure about it. Uh, didn't know if he the people would like him. Didn't know if he'd like the food. Uh, and then he finally decided. He went to the Dodgers, pitched incredible. From there, went to the Yankees. He loved America. No problem with the food. So, I mean, there, yeah. there's some players over there that are incredible that uh, should be in the big leagues in the States. You know, just, they just need that, that opportunity. Hopefully it comes, you know, for more guys. Yeah. Did, um, did any of the, the pitchers over there throw any knuckleballs or were you the only guy? I am the very first knuckleballer in Japan. Yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I recently just went over there in uh, October. They have a young uh, knuckleballer and you know I haven't been to Japan in 15 years and uh, they called me and said hey we got a young knuckleball pitcher we'd like you to help him so they flew me over and you know I worked with the kid for about three and a half weeks mm. I was very honored that they asked me you know after 15 years they still remember um, uh, they said you know we we love you and I'm like why and they said you're the first knuckleballer ever uh, you're kind of chubby I'm like what <laughs> it's just so people remember me I'm like hopefully you know I played well not just a that knuckleball guy so right um right. yeah i just had such a good time over there kind of chubby that's what i'm big big boned <laughs> right yeah yep <laughs> that's interesting because so you you did some consulting there have you ever thought or do you think is there enough because i think a lot of players could be in your same boat after that first year where mm-hmm. they've been told like look you're what do you say a dime a dozen if you will yep. i remember when i was scouting they would call that a jar, just another righty, right? That's exactly what they said to me. You are a dime a dozen. Dime a dozen. So, so there's so many guys that maybe fit that. Um, Not saying that like you could start a knuckleballer business, (laughs) but I wonder if, you know, guys, if if that would 
teams would eventually be more open to that just to add an arsenal to their their farm systems the organization you know yeah, I've, I've been offered uh some jobs in the minor leagues you know i'd like mm-hmm. to help out with the the carp some more they said they plan on having me come back and i think the benefit yeah. um that helped me is i was a regular pitcher before yeah. Um, and then became a knuckleballer. And when you're a knuckleballer, you still have to pitch. I mean, you're changing speeds. You have to throw other pitchers. So you're not just flipping burgers all day. So you, <laughs> you know, I really had to learn quick. So when you, uh, and I, again, I think that sometimes maybe that opportunity, if I'm throwing 55 and give up home runs versus somebody who throws 94, giving up home runs, you know, the people in charge can say, well, he throws 94, you know. Uh, knuckleballer, I don't think it's going to get that big of an opportunity. Just, you know, he throws 55 with knuckleball. Let's go get somebody else. Let's get that mm-hmm. kid 94 up here. So I think your opportunity isn't a bit as large. So you better seize it quick <laughs> when, yeah. you're, when you're in that opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you you pitched till you're about 35. Is that right? I'm not Probably. sure what, how old that was. Yeah. So. I, I got your numbers, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I think, well, at least here it says you were in Japan at age 35. Okay. Um, which is incredible. I mean, I was done at 30, just no, no spots, no opportunities anymore. And um, decided to hang them up at that point. And um, now you had two kids. You said your two kids went to Japan with you. Yep. Right. Now, yep. was that your last year playing or did you try to come yep. back to the States? No, 2007 was it. I um, got home. I, I had, I, my goal was always to go to the big leagues, pitch well, play till I'm 50. So when I was mm-hmm. finished at age 35, came home, that's when my injury started happening. You know, I had some small injuries. I had a little uh, back surgery with the Astros. I uh, broke my wrist one time with the Red Sox and a line drive back at me. I, well, I, they're not small injuries, but big injuries. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as I got home and um, I wanted to just take like a year off and then that my back when I had to get my back fused, I had some serious foot injuries um, due to baseball and that back surgery. So yeah, I, 50 wasn't going to happen. Me still playing. So 35 <laughs> was, was plenty. Yeah. Are, are you 50 now? I am. Yeah. So you, you, you would just be wrapping up. This would be your first <laughs> off season. Well, I, I did throw a pen in Japan just to show that, that kid uh, what a knuckleball looks like. And it was incredible. Like nice. uh, my knuckleball was really good. And they're like, would you come out of retirement? I'm like, yeah, if I lost a hundred pounds, you unfuse my back, you know, yeah. <laughs> There's a few things that have to happen. I'm a little so, locked up right now. Yeah. So yeah. Not, not happen. Ne- next life. Next life. Yeah. It's it, maybe it's, it's like golf, right? Well, didn't, so you mentioned the Negroes, right? Yeah. Now did they both throw knuckleballs at one point? They did. Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell us a little more about them. Cause they, Oh my they, gosh. They, they were pitched forever. Right. Yeah, they seen it all. So they they were both incredible. Um, you know, talking to Phil. So this was in 19 spring training of 95. So this has been a while. Mm-hmm. But you know, Phil was older and you know, he was still like, I like that you're aggressive because he was pretty aggressive throwing the knuckleball. You know, they liked that I was a regular pitcher, I think. He, and he's like, I could still pick pitch in the big leagues right now. I just don't have my fastball. I'm like, wow, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He still had that mentality. Oh, uh, yeah. it was awesome. Then what was so fun is so just talking knuckleballs. And I always love the the big league stories from the older guys, all the guys they'd faced. And, you know, I was just eating that up. It's my first spring training and I'm with Hall of Famer Phil Necro and Tim Wakefield, who I watched on TV, Joe Necro, who I watched and mm-hmm. just just loved it. And then they, the poor kid, they signed this catcher uh, out of high school and just said, hey, you're going to catch these guys. <laughs> So like the, we, it was so catcher sad. all the time type oh, thing. This kid had never caught a knuckleball. You know, he's doing this. Pow, just like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was awesome. So it, it yeah. was a fun spring training. Yeah. And too, like speaking of the catchers, like they typically, you start as, they had a bigger mitt. Yep. Right. Yep. I always Especially. carried a big one with me. It was actually a woman's uh, softball catcher's glove. Okay. So, and I always carried that with me and gave it to every catcher. You know, and I, throughout my career, I had incredible catchers that were, willing to willing to catch it and try and learn and it, it, i i was very lucky yes yeah. so name give us some of the names of the catchers that you worked with oh man so uh corky miller i don't know if you remember old corky mm-hmm. um osmos was incredible um do you remember tim spear did you ever play with tim spear i remember the name yeah yeah that that guy was amazing he played like 10 years in the big leagues just just his approach to catching it uh dana lavangi back with the red Sox. Um, John Buck with the, with uh, he's with the Royals for quite a while. Um, 
I'm going to leave tons of people off, but yeah, I had incredible catchers that I was very happy to pitch to. So yeah, do do, do were any of them like, oh god, I got to catch this freaking knuckleball I, guy? I only had one, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave his name off, right? Yeah you, yeah, you guys can look it up. I think we were playing the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he missed five in a row, and they mm. were all right there in the strike zone, and so I just lobbed number six, and he caught it and. 40,000 people. Yay. You know, so <laughs> yeah. And that was one of those days where, I mean, nobody could have caught it. It, it was raining. It was earlier. And then it was just hot and humid. I mean, that knuckleball was so fun to throw. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to catch it either on those days, so I can't blame him. So. Yeah. I, I would have to, because you're, I mean, you're one of the few pitchers that you're th- like, you're throwing, like you're pl- like, you're playing wiffle ball in the backyard. Yeah. Did you ever have those moments where you got some swing and miss and you're just like, yeah, I, like, I had, oh my uh, gosh, I had some good ones. I, I, I had one where um, I had a lefty up. I won't say his name, had a lefty up and it was my knuckleball was incredible that day. He swung and it hit him in the chest. So that, that was a pretty fun one, but yes. yeah, that some days it was really good. And other days, you know, I remember I had a game in um, St. Louis, it's like 26, 28 degrees in April. Mm. And my knuckleball was incredible. I mean, it, it was not spinning, coming in perfect. My release was perfect, but the elements weren't going to move it. And it was a rough game. So, you know, and that, <laughs> did you, you give up more than five that game? I gave up, <laughs> I think it was like six, no yeah. outs. But and quickly, no home runs. quickly, right? You know how hard that is to do? <laughs> give up six runs with no home runs. So, wow. But, <laughs> okay. So you're just, you're pinballing it all over the place. I was like, certainly somebody has to line drive it at somebody for an out, you know, but man, it was, right. it was a rough day, but okay. yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So I, I just found it fascinating because the only like, what other knuckleballs? So we have you, we have the Negroes, um, Tim Wakefield, what other guys were out there that were throwing knuckleballs? Um, Candy Addy, uh ra dickey and dickey, he won the Cy yes. Young award he was yes. incredible that guy's knuckleball was so good plus he threw really hard i mean he still threw 91 92 so if you're sitting 55 knuckleball and also zap he he had some good stuff electric wakefields was his knuckleball was so heavy and he was so consistent around the zone um yeah, he was incredible uh but that, there's been a, a few others with the red Sox. i can't remember everybody's name but uh and then also with with that knuckleball the other thing you had to learn is I'm throwing pretty slow to home plate. So I need to control mm. the running game. So, I mean, you yeah. really had to work on your pickoffs, um, still your time to home plate still had to be, you know, 1.3 seconds and under, um, or everyone's going to run all over you. So that you had to really control the running game as being a knuckleballer. Did you, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So when you were, you're obviously throwing knuckleballs most of the time, yeah. you know, when you have probably when you have runners on base too, are you, are you going like fastball grip and then going to a knuckleball? Like when you know you're going home or how, how did you manage that? Uh, I would mix it up because I got caught one year. Um, I didn't even see it. Like I would, when I was throwing home, I'd go like this. When I was picking up, I brought my elbows in. Okay. And luckily some guy got traded to us and told me about it. So I had guys just still in on me and I was, you know, a one, two, one, one to home, even on the fastball and people would still, I'm like, leave it early. Happening? He's like, you're tipping it. And yeah. it wasn't for long. It was just like for three months, I started tipping going home versus picking off. But thank goodness he told me. Cause that was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you hitters, you guys talk amongst yourselves and don't tell us pitchers nothing. So, well, yeah, I just, <laughs> you know, you find that like, if you're, if you're in here and you're already, you know, okay, I, I'm a knuckleball guy. I have to get my grip, and then you're you're coming set. And yeah. then did you did you change it directly to a fastball grip there? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was it was easy for me the way way I hold. No, I didn't no have my fingernails that. dug in, so yeah I, yeah, I could mix it up anytime. So okay, and then my fastball I usually threw just a little cutter. Um, yeah, well, that's another story. I I broke my finger, this finger, uh, one off season, and. Uh, so my fastball, I came back to spring training and it would stick on this finger and it would just cut. Mm. And they're like, oh, that's incredible. You've been working on that? I'm like, yeah. So I didn't, you know, didn't say I was messing around and hit a door <laughs> and broke my finger. They're like, oh, I like your cutter. I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Worked hard on this off season. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you, you're not throwing any knuckleballs over to Jeff Bagwell at first. No, <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's funny because 
uh, Billy Wagner with the Houston Astros, he goes, look, I throw the hardest in the league. You throw the slowest. We're throwing partners. I'm like, oh, that'll be fun. So, you know, he'd be crow hopping at 90 feet, just lighting yeah. me up that left-handed on my thumb. Yeah. And I was scared to throw knuckleballs to him because I didn't want to get released. So I just <laughs> lob it back and let him launch it back at me. But yeah. So, so speaking of that, so when you would train, right, you're throwing bullpens or mm -hmm. Were you still throwing long toss and stretching it out and kind of those regular things that pitchers do? I, I should have in the off season more. I mean, I, I always played winter ball, so I was still throwing mm -hmm. lots of innings. Uh, but I think not throwing long toss is why my velocity went down so much. But when I threw long toss and snapping my wrist to get it out there, mm -hmm. that made my knuckleball bad. So I was kind of in the yeah, that's kind of throw long toss to keep that fastball, but to maintain my knuckleball I needed to keep it short and stay stiff so it was you know you just got to figure out what what works for you okay well let's let's bring it back man let's resurgence of the knuckleballs let's go <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll try I'm, we'll get there have you have you done any um you know so you're out in Utah do you have any guys recruiting you for the the old man's league out there and <laughs> let's let's bring it out I I played the first year after I retired and they put me at second base and they had me hitting ninth and i'm like can i pitch right now i'm like i was in the big leagues last year you know maybe I <laughs> like, you don't look, look like so a pitcher funny. yeah i'm the worst hitter in the world and i hit like 500 on the team so okay so yeah i didn't 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 pitch with them but yeah it was fun but i just i started falling apart after that so yeah that was good too painful right yeah, sure. <laughs> that bat, that fused back like no thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hit when you have that. Nice. Well, very cool, man. Any other like stories that we we have to share with the audience here that you, you definitely want them to know about? <laughs> I got I got lots. Uh, you know, some you can't say, but yeah, I got lot, lots of stories. I just, I mean, I had the best time my whole baseball career. Met the best people ever. Uh, still keep in contact with guys I played with. You know. 15 20 years ago almost mm. so uh just I, I had an incredible time it's exact i got exactly what i wanted out of uh baseball traveled the world i mean i had so much fun so i'm just so thankful i had the opportunity to play love it love it well man i'm excited for you your careers we're not playing till 50 so <laughs> you would you would have just been wrapping it up yeah and with, I, you had a good career anyway 14 years pro professional baseball and uh, and it. so you, so you mentioned you like to hunt, fish, all that stuff. You still yeah. do all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're out in Utah. Just um, And, you know, we, I've got a good group of people. We just go camp. You know, we just like to be outside. So mm -hmm. uh, anything we do hunt, if, if we take something, um, you know, it's mandatory that we, we eat it. We harvest it. Um, we keep it cleaner than when we got there. You know, people shoot shotgun shells. We pick up all our shells. We clean up the mess. You know, we we definitely do some conservation out there so um you know it's not like we're just going running amok shooting guns and and not being safe i mean we 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 just love love our rocky mountains and take care of it yeah very cool man well jared this has been outstanding dude i, I love it i love the stories i you know i'm glad i ran into you on social media again and um but yeah I, i'm real excited for this beard company you got going on uh j fez beard seek co.com so make sure yeah. you guys check that out i and, appreciate uh, it appreciate you coming on man take care of yourself i appreciate it thanks thanks for having me on now. all right man take care thanks. we'll see you Bye. Bye. man that was a exciting conversation with jared fernandez very cool beard products right so if you got a beard make sure you check him out we'll make sure we put the his uh website there in the show notes but yeah check his beard out he's got a pretty cool logo so yeah, great story. Obviously he had the mentality here of he was given an opportunity where he pitched his first time in his pro ball. And now all of a sudden he's just told, Hey, you're just another right-handed pitcher. Like we got plenty of these guys, but he had the, the gumption, the resiliency. He had a little bag of tricks there that prolonged his career. Right? He said, I got something for you. The guy allowed him to do it. And next thing you know, he spent 14 years throwing a knuckleball. So kudos to you, Jared. We wish you nothing but the best. If you are looking to get coaching on your mental game for you or your athlete, make sure you visit mentaledgetrainingcoach.com where I have a membership for you where 
student athletes, high school, collegiate athletes can come on and get coaching from me weekly. So check that out. Any details, make sure you contact me. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next episode.